When you're shipping items into Amazon's Fulfilled by Amazon program, does it make more sense to do an LTL shipment, less than truckload, or to do it UPS cases? My name is Stephen Pope, I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy, and in this video, I'm gonna talk through how I make my decisions on which shipping carrier method to use and why. Selling on Amazon is difficult. It's everything but passive income. I share videos like this one to help Amazon sellers on their journey. My name is Stephen Pope, and I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy. When Amazon turns your world upside down, tune into My Amazon Guy to land safely and grow your Amazon business. All right, so I like did two minutes of prep for this video. It was so easy for me to answer this question that I literally only had to look at a couple of shipments and make this observation after years of doing this. When in doubt, go UPS case carrier. And I'm going to tell you why. Unless you're shipping at least two pallets, a single pallet is going to cause a lot more work and will have less benefits and really won't be more cost effective. There's going to be an exception to literally any kind of Amazon best practice. There are going to be exceptions to what I'm talking about. Feel free to write them in the comments section. But by and large, I'm telling you the 95% use case scenario you should be going UPS case partner carrier. So I looked at literally just two shipments coming into this video to see if I could find an example of timelines to help impact this case. So these are two recent shipments I made. The one I'm first looking at here is an LTL shipment. So the BOL generated on October 4th and it got picked up on that date. There is no information between October 4th and October 22nd zero information, right? So like Amazon's claiming that they're trying to add some more transparency to the LTL shipment process. I'm not seeing it quite yet. So it gets in transit on October 22nd. Uh, and, 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 and mind you, it was picked up on the 4th and then finally checks in on the 25th. So what this likely means is that the carrier sat it somewhere in its truck between the 4th and the 22nd. When it finally starts moving on the 22nd, they, they get to Amazon and they check it in on the 25th. And then finally it gets received on that date. So from the time I generated the shipment to the time it was checked in fully is 21 days on this particular LTL shipment. I'm gonna go to a random UPS carrier shipment you're gonna see that I created the shipment on the second, but it shipped on the 31st. So, so the 31st is the date it physically left or got scanned. And as you scroll through here, I'm sorry, let me see if I read that right. 29th, excuse me, 29th. So 29th, it leaves uh, the carrier. Uh, and then by the time January 2nd rolls over, it's fully checked in. Three days, three days on this shipment. And, and so this is not abnormal, right? So on average, a UPS case shipment is checking in somewhere between three and five days at Amazon's FBA facility. An LTL averages somewhere around 10 to 15 days and about 30% of my LTL shipments across my clients' accounts take 20 plus days and at least 10 to 15% of LTL shipments take 30 days plus, 30 days. So if you are trying to keep your stock limited at Amazon, and especially during the situation where they're limiting your actual ability to ship in high quantities into Amazon, that tells you everything you need to know. UPS case shipments all day long. Um, when, you, when you go to create a shipment, you can select and see the cost differences as well. So not only is the speed significantly better consistently by using the Amazon partner carrier, UPS. Um, and, 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 and there are so many logistic uh, headaches when it comes to LTL. Now, if you are shipping two plus pallets consistently, everything I've talked about in this video doesn't apply to you so far. Uh, but if you are doing a single pallet or even the, 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 the real break even points right around pallet two from my experience. So if you come in here, and you select your small parcel versus less than truckload, you can filter between the two. And so what I would do if I were in your shoes is, is take one of your average shipments, put
put it in both options and play with it. So as you scroll down, how is the shipment packed? We got multiple boxes. Uh, so this particular shipment, I did LTL, and it's because I could only fit in seven units per master carton, which would have been 28 boxes going UPS. Well, if you pull out a calculator and 28 boxes averages somewhere right around $8.50 for my particular shipment, and we times that, it comes out to $238. Now, if we scroll down and look at what I actually paid in uh, freight, I paid 102, and that was with two pallets. Now, one of those pallets, both of these pallets were very light, so this is an uh, abnormally small uh, pallet shipment. So, uh, did very well with that particular shipping charge uh, coming in at at that small amount, half the cost it would have been to go with the UPS cartons. But if it was a single pallet, my cost would have still been right around uh, $100. So when you add additional pallets in, your cost does not go up significantly. Often the times, uh, it, it doesn't go up much at all. Um, so if, let's say this was a really heavy pallet, chock full of stuff, uh, 60 inches high, uh, or 72 even, uh, which is the max. And, and let's say it was close to the 1,500 pound max. At that stage, I would say you're probably going to average about $100 on the first pallet, maybe $120, and then each additional pallet, somewhere around $80. Uh, <clears throat> now, this, mind you, is going from a close distance, not coast to coast or any of those crazy expensive scenarios like going New York to California or, or California to Florida or whatever. Uh, but, but as you go through and look at uh, the details, if it's a light shipment, uh, your, your costs are significantly less no matter which method you go. Um, but sometimes if, if there's a lot, of, a lot of boxes, a pallet shipment will come out of head like it did in this particular instance, right? So if we were to recreate the shipment and go through and put in the same case dimensions of the boxes, put in the same number of boxes, I would have been more than probably two, two and a half times, almost two, two and a half times as much to go carrier through uh, UPS partner carrier. So this is, this is when, I, um, when I have lots of boxes that are large, especially I will go LTL. But if, but if I'm gonna be shipping in uh, a lot of, of small boxes, um, often the case UPS will still, um, still at least be comparable. But, but because of all the logistical nightmares of LTL, so first of all, when you create an LTL shipment, you have to schedule pickup for the following day at bare minimum. So you got pallets sitting on docks waiting. Uh, and for most of us uh, who are selling on Amazon at, at, at pre-sophisticated levels, you're doing this out of your basement, your garage, your, your, your closet, whatever. You don't have the ability to wait around for an LTL pickup. You don't have the ability or, or the desire to request uh, a lift gate and those kinds of scenarios. So if that's you, you should never be doing LTL. Uh, but if you do have a warehouse, you do have a 3PL, I still think UPS uh, partner carrier comes out ahead until you're doing consistent two pallet shipments. And at that point, it gets a little bit better. Even if you are doing LTL shipments though, one of the things that I think is most frustrating is that uh, they, don't, they don't necessarily give you a window of when they're gonna come. Uh, they often will miss coming at all, uh, and that especially happened in Q4 of 2020 uh, when supply chains break down. But if you go UPS carrier, you could drop that off at the UPS station, and you know that that uh, particular station has no reason to hold your inventory. They, they have no room to hold it. They're going to try and move it through uh, the logistics uh, supply chain as fast as they possibly can because it behooves them to do so. They make more money if they move it. Whereas the guy who's trying to fill up that truck, he has to fill that truck up and then he has to um, schedule all those things in place uh, to make that happen. Now, if you're doing full truck loads, you're on the sophisticated side, you might as well just be scheduling your own truck and dropping it off yourself. And, and that's probably the route you should go. All right, so, so those are the reasons that I think uh, UPS carrier is by and large the better method when in doubt, but there are you know, two pallet scenarios or more, definitely go, definitely go LTL. 
But even still, um, if you're if you're working with uh, partners who don't necessarily know how the LTL partner uh, system works with with Amazon and the pickup method and the scheduling and the BOLs, the bill of ladings, and and some of that headache, I would still go UPS most likely by default. Um, and there's some additional benefits to doing that. Even the time trying to explain the LTL process to your partner carrier, your warehouse, or your logistics team, whatever that might make up look like, is going to be a big time investment and, and uh, a lot of hassle and headache. So unless you're really scaled up in operations and you're shipping big items and multiple pallets and you don't have to worry about stockouts, uh, then, then you could go pallets. But if, but if you are worried about stockouts, you're worried about how long a shipment takes to get in, and you aren't sending in gig, uh, a high uh, number of boxes, then UPS case is probably the best way to go. The more items you can fill into a case, the better. Now, a couple other words of wisdom. Uh, make sure that no box that you send that has two units or more weighs more than 50 pounds. They, they throw a, a, a hissy fit when you do that. Um, so you have to you have to keep that under 50 pounds. Otherwise, it's, it's considered team lift, and there could be additional fees that come into play. Another problem I, I have been seeing, especially of late, and Amazon's been smacking people with $25 fines per box, is if the the longest uh, d diameter on the box is greater than a certain uh, length, and I believe that length is 30 inches right now. Could be wrong on that exact amount, but it's right around there. And if it's too long. Uh, they they do not like that as well, and they'll they'll charge you twenty twenty five dollars per box when doing that. So that and by the way, that tip is regardless of whether you're going UPS case or whether you're going LTL. Um, and it doesn't seem to give a warning message for this when you put the dimensions in uh, when you're doing your shipment. So it's usually a giant surprise to you when when you get hit with those fines. So that's just my uh, my recommendations on on logistics and shipping. Uh, if if you aren't doing or don't have the capacity to do your own shipping to consumers directly, I also recommend you invest in that uh, this year. You've seen the supply chain just com completely erode in 2020, and it's not going to be coming back any bit better uh, in 2021. So it behooves you to make sure that you have control over your supply chain, be as vertically integrated as you possibly can. Um, I'm an advocate for local manufacturing whenever possible, and I'm not just talking uh, consumables or beauty products. I'm talking home goods. I think that we need as a country to, to manufacture those local just from an uh, you know, economic standpoint, but I also think it's just an advantageous thing for you as a business owner to go down that path. But I am in the minority on this question, um, and it's probably because I just aspire for us to be able to do that. Uh, me personally, as well as, as those uh, that I work with. All right, so uh, thanks so much for watching. My name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy. You can learn more about us by going to myamazonguy.com. Part of our full service management is to help guide you through your own logistics, uh, and our service fee on a monthly basis will probably be more than paid for in any one of these four areas of PPC, SEO design, or catalog. And I probably should mention logistics up there, but uh, but in any case, the logistics part is included as part of our full service in terms of guiding you and helping you create shipments, lots of other things like creating listings, product research, you name it. Um, leave a comment on this video. Let me know what you think about uh, my thoughts on going UPS carrier when in doubt. And if you have any uh, scenarios or strong viewpoints, uh, don't hesitate to leave it. I, I read every single comment. So if you've got a question that's unrelated to this video, don't hesitate to leave that as well. Thanks for watching.